Hi creators, my name is Monica and welcome back to Academic Phoenix Plus. If you're new to this channel, I post 3D tutorials on a weekly basis. I cover mostly Maya, ZBrush, Substance Painter, and more. If that is your sort of thing, please consider subscribing. So bring out your creativity, open up that software, and let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to a Halloween special. I'm going to be showing you guys how to use a texture or an image and export geometry out of it. So this is one of those uh, tutorials that was requested because I created this lamp a little while ago and some people were asking me how I created these complicated pieces of geometry. As you can see, the geometry is not very pretty. It's a lot of tries and also here's a bat. But what I did was use an image and I was able to cut out geometry and it's pretty neat. So let me show you how I did that. So let's go ahead and start off with the plane. And I'm going to go ahead and move it to the side and make it a little bit bigger. And there's this really easy, fancy tool called Modify Convert. And over here, we have something called Textures to Texture to Geometry. And let's go to the options. I'm going to go ahead and go to Edit Reset Settings. And the first thing it's going to ask you is what image would you like to use? So I'm going to go ahead and go to Select. And I am going to go to my source images and I already have a bat. So I'll show you that one and then click open. And you are more than welcome to play around with these, but in general, I leave them at default and then apply and close. Just give uh, Maya a second to go ahead and work its magic. And there we go. So what it does is that it actually reads the image and then it makes a cutout out of it and does not care about uh, quads. It only cares about triangles and getting the shape, which is fine. So how do we clean this up though? I mean, I could go ahead and grab a face and make a selection and delete it and then, but that seems a little bit, uh, seems like a lot of work. And you also notice that it did duplicate the plane. So we have an extra one here and they are parented. So keep that in mind that if you look over here to the outliner, here's the plane, the original plane and the bat geometry is here. All right, so how do we get this bat to be separated? Well, that's where the hyper shade comes in. So let's go over here to the top where we see a teal circle with a white dot. And you're going to notice that we have these three new materials and they're called bat, bat black shaders and two and three. So if I want to delete something, what I could do is right click on the shader and then say um, select object with material and then I can delete it. So you can see that I selected that blue part and now I'll be able to just go ahead and delete it. So I can do the same thing with the white. I can right click, say select object material, and then I can delete it. And now I have a bat. So I'm going to select this, do a shift P which, which unparents it. So now the bat geometry is no longer parented to this one. And now I'm ready to do whatever I needed to do. So I'm going to go ahead, free to delete the history and all that jazz. There we are. We now have a bat. Cool. Let's move that aside and let's pick a more complicated shape. Let's pick something like this, like a house. So let's go ahead and do it again. We're going to go to modify, convert, textures to geometry. Let's go to the options and let's go ahead and click on select and choose the house. You can see that the, the original image had, had a gradient from black to purple. So I went into Photoshop and made sure it was completely black and went ahead and selected. Also notice that this is a JPEG, so you can do this with a JPEG or a PNG or really just about anything. So again, I'm going to keep it a default and I'm going to go ahead and select this and click apply and let it do its thing. And there it is just like that. So here's my plane. Here's my house silhouetted. And if you want to go ahead and do a shift P, which will unparent the house. And now I can move it aside. Let's go ahead and rotate this 90 degrees and then rotate this negative 90 degrees. Cool. Now, as you can see, it does lose some of the details. The original image, which I can pull up right here, does have windows and things like that. So it does lose some, it does keep the silhouette and has a tendency to lose some of the detail. So that's something to consider. So once again, let's go to the hypershade and we now have this one, which is the house silhouette. And what I can do is right click on this, select object material. And if I want to, I can go to faces and do a control E and extrude. 
So now I have something that's got a thickness to it, which is pretty neat. I don't know about you guys, but I think it's pretty neat. So how do we get those windows? Well, um, this converter is not as great for the basics, but when it comes to making changes, it doesn't do such a great job. So at the end, it does a really good job with black and white images and uh, and also with the silhouette and it's very easy for me to go in and grab the select to select the material and then separate the material. Now this can get a little full so if you want to you can go to edit delete unused nodes in the hypershade and this will clear it out. And now I can go in right click select objects and then delete it. So in general it may not be a, the most strongest Maya tool but it does produce some really nice results. Now you may be asking, well, what happens with color? And I'm actually going to show you just that. So let's go to Modify Convert Textures to Geometry. Going to again go to Edit Reset Settings and let's select. And this time I'm going to grab a PNG and you can see it's my logo. So I'm going to go ahead and click Open. Again, I'm leaving everything at default and apply and see what happens. So you can see down here at the bottom left that it's detecting features and that it is calculating away. And you can see that it does actually try to accept color, which is actually, in my opinion, pretty neat. As you can see, the geometry is not great. And it missed a couple of the details such as, well, my eyes and a couple of other stuff. But for a chunky looking uh, logo, for chunky art, this is actually pretty neat. So again, I can go into the hypershade. And then if I want to, I can right click and select the geometry and you can see that it's got transparency. So I tried to accept the transparency. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that. And I can right click on this select and I'll, I can also go in and change the color. So for example, I can either change it here or I can select the geometry and assign a material that is already there. So let me go ahead and rotate this. Again, not the best representation of my image, but and it definitely does a better job with the silhouette when it comes to black and white images. But in general, it can do some interesting abstract art. And also add random geometry here on the corners, which is very interesting. But at the end, you can get something for your logo if that's something that you're interested in doing. All right, guys, I hope you found that helpful. Let me know by leaving a comment below. But as you can see, by grabbing these images, I was able to create this lamp really quickly because trying to model this would have taken a while. But by using that texture and convert it into geometry, it really made my this lamp uh, take no time at all. So if you guys want to see the speed lapse or the speed speed sculpt when I made this I will go ahead and post it up here at the top and also down in the description so you guys can check it out but basically that's how I created these and then of course you can have some extra fun by converting logos and so on and so forth so again I hope you guys found this helpful let me know by leaving a comment below um, also don't forget to like and subscribe if you think uh, you like these videos and you want to see more by liking and subscribing you're letting me know that you want to see more of these videos of course, don't forget to share by sharing your, these videos to somebody that uh, another artist just like you and you think that this artist could use a little extra help. Please let them uh, please share these videos. That would be amazing. Uh, don't forget that I also have academicphoenixplus.com as a resource for you. That is a place where you guys can find free models, free trainings, free ebooks and so much more. So take a look at academicphoenixplus.com. Again, thank you so much for watching. I really appreciate it. Hopefully you uh, enjoyed this quick but uh, helpful Maya tool. Keep creating and I will see you next time.